I'm going to show you how to remove chat GPT isms or AI isms, whatever you want to call them from your writing to make your writing sound much more human and also teach you a little bit about what makes good writing. Let's get into it. All right, everyone. So the program we're going to be using today is called AutoCrit. I've talked about this in other videos before, but I actually think it's one of the best programs out there, if not the best program out there for taking AI writing and making it better. Now, it doesn't do this automatically. You do have to put in a little bit of the editing effort yourself, which is what you should be doing anyway but it does a fantastic job at identifying those areas that are weak points for the AI and then giving you the tools and everything you need to be able to fix those things. And so I'm going to give you an overview of all of the different things that can go wrong with AI writing and how Autocrit is able to identify those things. There is a link to Autocrit below and it's a lifetime deal, which you can only get with certain links. Uh, I think if you go directly to their website, I'm pretty sure they don't offer the lifetime deal. And it's kind of a discount because this thing normally costs about $30 a month. And with, with the lifetime, you can get it for a, a lot cheaper if you plan on using it for a while. So there's a affiliate link below again, with any of the affiliates that I promote, I make sure I vet them very carefully. I only really promote the ones that I personally use myself, uh, which is not very many. So I do highly recommend Autocrit, but let's get into actually what it can do so you can uh, have that information before you go in and take a look at the link. So first of all, when you come here into uh, the Autocrit space, there are a number of different things that you can look at here along the top. Pacing momentum, dialogue, strong writing, word choice, uh, repetition, readability, inspiration. So that might seem a little overwhelming to you. And there's like, well, where do I even start? So the, where I go here is the analysis tool right here. You click on that and it comes up with these four options. The one you want here is summary report. If you click on that, it will take a little time to process creating its summary report. All right, and the first thing that you can do here is you can actually decide what it's comparing against because that's important. Right now I have it comparing against general fantasy because that's the genre that I'm writing in. You could also compare it against a specific author or something like that. And the reason that you wanna do this is because if there is something that is off by a lot, like say you have way more adverbs than the average book in your genre, then that could be a warning sign that you actually want to go in and fix a couple of those adverbs and things like that. If I wanted to change this, I could come here and then I could select from any number of authors or genres. For instance, everyone knows I really love Brandon Sanderson, so I could select him and now it's going to run and now it's comparing against Brandon Sanderson. And I think I'll actually leave it at that for the rest of uh, this demonstration so you can see how that works. But then right below that, we have the overall score. It's giving me an 87.1, which is actually not too bad. And then it gives you some interesting things to that you might want to take a look at. It says, this is an excellent overall score in line with bestseller expectations. Even a diamond must be polished. However, if it is to dazzle at its full potential, note your overall score is a combination of the scores in the individual character categories of pacing, momentum, dialogue, strong writing, word choice, and repetition. And if you look at the individual scores here, you can see some perform better than others. And the one that performed worse is strong writing. So this may be an indicator that strong writing might be something I want to look at. And I've noticed that this is relatively true for AI writing. It lacks often in the strong writing category quite a bit. It does okay with pacing and momentum. Dialogue often needs some work. That's the second lowest one here. Word choice is actually often very good because AI tends to diversify its word choice pretty well, uh, often too well at least more so than a human does. Humans often tend to have a more limited vocabulary than something like AI has. And then also repetition is the third lowest here on this list. So I might take a look at that as well to try and raise this score up. And it even gives you a recommendation based on the score. It says the strong writing category requires the most attention, which we just sort of established. And so now we can go through and look through all of the things that make up this score. We look at pacing and momentum, right? Pretty on par with that. We don't, we know we don't necessarily need to do a whole lot of stuff there. Dialogue, we'll get to dialogue, but let's start with the strong writing category. 
First on the list is adverbs. So Brandon Sanderson apparently has 674 adverbs in an average book. And keep in mind that his books are enormous and this is a small book. So the fact that I have 867 in my book is actually, it should be far lower than what Brandon Sanderson has. I, I'd say closer to around 200. So we want to cut this by at least 75%. Uh, and then it gives it a little bit of explanation about why you don't want many too many adverbs here. That's not to say the adverbs are bad, but they are something that you don't want to over rely on. And given that I have 867 of them in this book, that probably means that I'm over relying on them just a little bit. Additionally, there are showing versus telling triggers. There are certain words that indicate that a text is telling more than showing. Not always accurate, but they can be really good triggers to try and find instances where you might need to show more and then you can go and actually show more. It might look on the surface that I'm doing okay here because I have a little bit fewer than what Brandon Sanderson has. But again, keep in mind his books are enormous and this is a smaller book. And so saying that that's good, it might not actually be true. I wanna probably cut that about in half. Filler words, I'm okay with this as far as filler words go. I think this is all right. Passive phrasing, also I'm doing okay here. I might wanna cut this down just a little bit, but um, AI is usually not too bad at passive phrasing. Here's one of my favorites, number of cliches. And we'll take a look at, at this, but Brandon Sanderson has 19, I have 29. So that's something that we would wanna take a look at. Number of redundancies, we're kind of neck and neck there, but I might wanna bring mine down. And that's a pretty good overview of some of the the reports that we want to look at in strong writing so let's actually break these down one by one and show you how you can improve them okay let's start with adverbs so when when we get to this we'll just say run report it brings us to this little screen as it runs the adverb report and by the way you can access all of these individually just by coming to these categories here so since i know strong writing is an area where i need to improve uh, I can just come here to this button that says strong writing and then all of the strong writing reports will be in there. But let's take a look at these. I've got quite a few. It looks like slowly is the most frequently used one and it, there are 32 instances of the word slowly in this book. And it's recommending I remove about 21 of them. So what you can do is you can select the word slowly here and it will show where you're using that word and just pop down to the very next one. So how would we improve this? Well, often an adverb is used as a crutch where you could actually show the action in a way that it has a little bit more emotional value and paints the picture of the scene a little bit better. So for instance, in this case, the sentence is, after taking a moment to secure her balance and smile at the thrill of her own supernatural strength, she straightened slowly to glance around. Now that I might be okay just leaving this here, but I could also take this and say, she straightened from her low crouch, glancing everywhere to remain completely aware of and therefore in control of her surroundings. She loved this part, you know, something like that makes it a little better. I'll give you another example. Let's go ahead, we'll deselect slowly and work on silently. Moving silently, Mina crept forward. This is actually a good example of where we could completely eliminate this phrase moving silently already because moving silently is implied in the next phrase, Mina crept forward. We're already assuming with the word crept that she is moving silently. So we can just eliminate that one altogether and now we have a tighter, better paragraph here. We find another one. She drifted silently between the crates, sensing stra senses strained, her body coiled tight, ready to strike. This is another one where I think we could just remove the silently altogether. We could maybe find, come up with a better verb than drifted, or we could add a phrase like not making a sound, which believe me or not, even though this is four words instead of one is actually a better way to say silently. And then we have another one here. Silently, she withdrew a few coins from her cloak and placed them on the street, then re retreated several steps. This one I might actually leave here, except it's actually not quite the meaning that I want to convey, I would maybe actually replace this with a different adverb and we could keep the adverb there or I could replace it with something like without thought. But actually, I think silently might work just fine there. So you get what we're doing here with adverbs. It's a very important process to actually go through 
and make sure you're not over relying on any of these words in particular especially go through any of these where you have 20 or more it's going to tell you if you have excess of a certain word in there but let's look at some of the other strong writing choices that uh, we need more clarity on let's look at showing versus telling this is a big problem for writers. Most writers, especially when they're starting out, don't really have a grasp of this yet. And it's something that really only comes with experience from what I've seen. It's really hard to tell when you are telling. But thankfully, there are a number of trigger words that might be indicators that you are telling instead of showing. And Autocrit does a good job of flagging those for you. For instance, let's look at could. All right, so clearly lots of instances of could being used in my book. This first one, I can clearly see this is not an instance where I need to show more than tell. Uh, unfortunately for him, she had senses no one could possibly anticipate. Here's a good example. She could still remember the icy pain as her blood was drawn out, the creeping chill that stole through her body. So instead of saying she could still remember, we want to show that. We want to show how that thought is affecting Mina when she remembers. So instead of saying she could remember, we say something like, she shivered at the memory, okay? So it's now an action, it's something that's happening. We're kind of seeing her visceral response to the memory. One of the most common words that are trigger words for show don't tell is felt or feel or any of those. Here's a good example of this sentence here. She felt his heartbeat slowing, slowing. So instead of she felt, we could say this in a much better way to actually show her feeling his heartbeat slowing, slowing. And it can be as simple as just saying the thump of the thump of his heartbeat slowing, slowing. And that's already a better sentence. So that's a quick example of what some showing and not telling trigger words uh, are. But another one that is very common in AI is cliches. Cliche, uh, AI very frequently brings up cliches. So let's take a look at the cliche report here. And it gives you a couple of words and phrases here, like glimmer of hope. That sounds definitely like something the AI would use quite frequently. And so here's a sentence. She could only pray some glimmer of hope yet remained. Yep, I would say that's kind of a cheesy cliche sort of sentence. So let's make sure we edit it. And to get into deep point of view, I wanna make this sound as if it's her thought, like it's actually her thinking. So something along the lines of, was there any hope to hold on to? That's a question mark. So it sounds more like something she's actually thinking. Perhaps Sherlock still stalked the tunnels above, seeking a way to thwart this evil. And so now I've taken care of that one glimmer of hope. We can go ahead and check out the other one as well. Despite herself, Cosmina felt a glimmer of hope. Then you are not angry, my lord. So instead of she felt a glimmer of hope, and again, there's that trigger word felt there, we could say something like, despite herself, Cosmina raised her head, barely daring to hope. Much better than saying Cosmina felt a glimmer of hope. And there are a couple of other things that we can look at in strong writing to improve it. For instance, unnecessary filler words. I'm looking at a couple of those. Passive voice indicators, such as the word was, uh, which is definitely something to keep an eye out for. But then we could also look at dialogue, for instance. Dialogue is one of those areas. It was my second least strong section for this book. And so we can take a look at the dialogue report. So this is just showing like how many sentences have dialogue as opposed to Brandon Sanderson in this case, how many sentences of his have dialogue. And he has 27.9% of his sentences are dialogue. Mine is only 19%. So that might just be an indicator that I might be able to use dialogue a little bit more in certain places. Be a good example of, for instance, I could show all of the dialogue that I'm using here and look for sections where there isn't a whole lot of dialogue. For instance, right here, there's just lots of exposition without any dialogue. Now she might be alone. I think she is in this case but it might be just a good way to sort of check and say, maybe I could just insert some dialogue here to make it a little bit better. Or turn a scene from one that is more introspective to one that is a conversation between two, two different people, which is actually a great way to introduce more conflict and to make the passing action more interesting to the reader. Additionally, we have dialogue tags. Now I've already gone through and done a lot of work on the dialogue tags in this book. That was one of the first things I did. So you can see my count for dialogue tags is much lower. But the important thing here is that your said asked dialogue tags are far greater than your other dialogue tags. 
because for the most part, readers don't need to see anything unique with dialogue tags. It really should be said or asked because those tend to just be glossed over by the reader. All the reader really needs to know is who's doing the talking. And even then, sometimes they don't need to know that if you're writing dialogue well. So I just like to make sure that the a number of others that are not said is significantly less than my said and asked, which it is here probably not as much as Brandon Sanderson does. He has a lot more said and asked and much fewer proportionally of the others. So I could maybe bring this down even more, for instance, in this case, but it matters not. He continued his tone business-like once more. This is a good example where it doesn't really add anything. We know he's continuing because he's continuing. So all we have to do is just say, he said, and now we've made an improvement there. So that is the general gist of how this program works. And again, there are lots of different reports, but if you want my advice on the best ones to look at for AI writing, it's this one, the dialogue tags adverbs in dialogue and then under strong writing you want to look at adverbs show versus telling and cliches those are going to be the ones you probably do the most work under because those are the things that ai often gets wrong or excessive even when prompted well so go ahead and check that out and i will see you in the next video